What's up? How are you guys? We've made it another week. However, my mind has not. We lost that long ago. <laughs> but uh, we're going to take a look at a vegan day of eating, which I don't think we've done in a while. So uh, not holding our breath, but you know, we thought the vegan trend died uh, a few months ago, right? I guess, I honestly, I guess all the vegans are so deprived of B vitamins that they haven't had the energy to uh, make YouTube videos anymore. But we found one this week. A day of delicious vegan meals. What I eat in a day. Plant-based. Is this too loud? I think it's okay. Hello, my beautiful friend. Yo, should we play uh vegan bingo? What's it called? Over or under? I don't I don't know what it... <laughs> The point is there's like a specific list of ingredients that all vegans typically use in their day of eatings. Very common ones are like avocado, tahini, maple syrup, just very like cookie cutter spice blends. What's another one? I'm sure you guys will list them in the comments that I forget friends and welcome back to another video i hope you have been keeping so very well and you're having a beautiful day so far today i wanted to bring you along for a classic what i eat in a day video and i have three really delicious recipes that i'm excited to share uh, and also eat today basically i'm starting my day with a big glass of water it is the summertime here in australia and i'm feeling like at the moment i'm having to make like such a conscious effort to be hydrated i have to drink so much water to be hydrated because it is so humid and so warm here at the moment but yeah this is basically the size of my head so it's a pretty good and hydrated way to start the day this morning i am about to head out and go for a little no lemon no celery juice is this a vegan crime walk and also get some groceries for what i want to make today before i do i am going to prep some chocolate hazelnut soaked oats i feel like i go through such phases with what i enjoy eating and at the moment i really have been feeling like a cold breakfast not like a hot cooked breakfast and that probably uh says something about the climate because it's like a thousand degrees outside where's the coffee we're, mi we're missing some key vegan elements here that I'm living in and the way that I would prefer to eat uh, colder food. And back in the day before I worked online, I used to work in hospitality and work really early mornings a lot of the time. And I used to have these chocolate hazelnut soaked oats prepped in the fridge, ready for me to have on the way to work in the morning for a time saving purpose. And also because oats give me so much energy and really like get me through the day of being on my feet. So I've been revisiting making these lately, making them a little bit different to how I used to. and. Wow, they are really, really good. So uh, if you do like chocolate hazelnut, like I... These people are, are king yappers, bro. They just yap and yap and yap. If, it, if, if this was my day of eating video, we'd already be done with breakfast. I do. It's pretty much like my favorite sweet flavor of all time. This might be one that you will really enjoy. I'm going to prep this and leave it in the fridge so that when I get back, uh, I can serve it and enjoy it breakfast then. Hey, Tiny. Hello. You going to make... I'll be constructive with this, not to be rude, but you know, you make a day of eating video. You talk about water for thirty seconds, how you how you're so thirsty. You talk about the climate. You, you know, we're two minutes into the video. You haven't shown us any food yet, and now you're playing with your cat. Like breakfast with me? Yeah. Really? That's crazy. Okay, so I'm starting with about three quarters of a cup of rolled oats, and then I'm adding in half of a cup. You know what's funny, bro? People care about your cat as much as your cat cares about you. Like your cat does not give, your cat will eat your face off <laughs> the day after you drop, you know? <laughs> that That's how people feel about other people's pets for the most part. So keep that in mind. Of hazelnut meal, I'm gonna add in a heaped tablespoon of cacao powder, as well as a tablespoon of chocolate protein powder. Then I'm gonna add in some plant-based milk. I like using soy milk when I'm making soaked oats and i'm also adding about a tablespoon of maple syrup to sweeten there we I go like adding a little pinch of maple salt. syrup already got one one vegan bingo in the first meal to bring out the flavor a little bit more and then i'm going to mix this together until it's all nice and well so this is actually not that bad with the exception of the soy milk uh if she used 
like a homemade plant milk. This would actually be something I would personally eat if it was organic because it's calorically dense in carbohydrates. You're giving your body energy, the caloric nutrition that it needs. Yeah, of course, it's missing some uh, animal nutrition components, but anti-nutrient content isn't that high. And pretty much everything she put in here is, is really good. You know, oats, hazelnut meal, which is just a somewhat healthy fat. Cacao powder, I mean, in regards to sources of chocolate, I guess if it's raw cacao powder, that's about as good as you can get. You just got to be careful you're not using cocoa powder. Just uh, be very specific with the sourcing of the chocolate. And again, soy milk, eh, not great. Macadamia nut milk is probably the best option. You can make your own homemade oat milk. That's not that bad either. You just want to avoid uh, preservatives, synthetic vitamins, and like emulsifiers and some stuff they can add in these in these plant-based milks well combined and i remove uh, the clumps of protein powder and cacao powder that are definitely going to want to form okay i'm going to put this in the fridge for about an hour and then once i'm back it should be ready to go and we'll put some delicious toppings on it and enjoy breakfast very much so <laughs> So I, I didn't see what that was uh, that she dolloped on there. Uh, we did forget to mention she put a little, a uh, tiny bit of chocolate protein powder in there, which is probably just some plant-based protein powder. And all of those are usually made with pea protein, which has very low bioavailability. If anything, it's just going to make you fart. And uh, usually a bunch of like chemical flavorings and additives that you don't really want. Yeah, some of these plant-based yogurts are better than others. Uh, I guess the coconut milk ones aren't that bad, but it depends on how many chemicals and and flavorings they add to it. And and the strains of probiotics are generally like not natural in the correct ratios or active bacteria, but not one of the worst things that people eat if we're being, uh, that vegans eat if we're being honest. Before we get into making some lunch, I want to say a big- Is this- what's with these vegans and the golden spoons? Thank you to my friends at Squarespace who very kindly sponsored- What a- what an irrelevant sponsorship. I recently went to this vegetarian pub and had this amazing vegan meal which was this crispy salt and vinegar cauliflower that- Vegetarian pub? That must be a lively crowd, bro. They must be having so much fun farting on each other. Came with chips and sl best business opportunity for HVAC professionals to increase ventilation capacity of plant based eateries. And while I was eating it and then thinking about it afterwards because it was so good, I was like, I feel like this would be really, really good in a burger. So today I tried making this for the first time and I cut up the cauliflower and soaked it in some vinegar. And then I made a batter with some panko breadcrumbs, some corn flour and some salt. Super, super simple. Blitzed it all together until it was really, really nice and smooth. And then once it was smooth, I transferred it into a bowl. When I make uh, battered things like this, I also usually do a liquid. And so today I did soy milk, salt, and some white vinegar. And the white vinegar kind of curdled uh, the milk a bit to thicken it up a bit. And then it made it really easy to dip the cauliflower in. So I'm not sure why you would uh, blend panko breadcrumbs. Wouldn't that just make them regular breadcrumbs? I had it in the vinegar mixture, then dipped it with the milky vinegar mixture and then coated it in those breadcrumbs. So I had two big chunks here, which are going to kind of act as like burger patties in this instance. And I fried them up in some oil until they were nice and crispy. Bro, like, like I don't understand. You, li <laughs> you cut a head of cauliflower in half and call it burger patties. There's, some there's something wrong in these people's heads, bro. I can't. I really can't. They're, they're craving meat so badly. Like, they're, they're just calling anything meat now. She's going to take a piece of a paper towel and start licking it and calling it uh, beef jerky. Like on both sides you could definitely do this as florets if you want to have it as like a little snack 
uh, side piece if you would like to. Then I also made the slaw. I'm not good at using so much oil in that pan. <laughs> this uh, little kitchen gadget yet. So it was a little bit, look, I definitely wasn't using it the right way. So anyway, I, I changed over to a knife. I cut up some carrot, some red cabbage, and then I also cut up some apple. Apple in slaw is something that I had never had before and now that I've had it, I'm like, wow, this is absolutely incredible. Uh, I feel like it just adds this extra little bit of sweetness, which goes perfectly if you're making like a summer kind of burger. So then I put these into a bowl with some lemon juice as well as some vegan mayonnaise and I mix it all together. I mean, it's just a really poorly chopped coleslaw. Uh, these types of high color Vegetables are pretty inflammatory from a flavonoid and carotene perspective. You could make a healthy slaw using lighter colored stuff, maybe with just like cabbage and apples and keeping things very light colored and using a, a healthier fat source. The vegan mayos are always like oxidized omega-6 seed oils. There's no, there's no vegan mayo that you would want. Uh, and I don't think anyone's making vegan mayonnaise using coconut oil, which would be acceptable, but um, it's just not that great. But I mean, a lot of the stuff that, like that stuff that she's using, she can make her own mayo. That is healthy. And then I start assembling my burger. So I'm using a vegan brioche. And we haven't spoken about it in a lot, but the reason uh, some of these fats are so bad is because they have a predominant omega-6 content, which the body doesn't recognize as healthy. Once your cells exceed a certain percent of fat from omega-6, your body just gets really inflamed. So it's it's more natural for the body to be eating mostly saturated fats and a very, very tiny amount of omega-6 is okay, but especially not in these oxidized seed oil forms, which are being used in most mayonnaises. Burger bun. I put some avocado on as well oh, as we got some... two, two, two vegan bingo. We got the avocado. Spinach. Then I piled on some of that apple slaw, added on one of those crispy cauliflowers with some vegan mayo and a burger bun on. The, th the thing and the pet peeve I have about vegetables is people eat them because they think they're healthy, but one, they're not, and they always make things taste worse. Like this would be so much tastier probably without the spinach on it. On top. Honestly, I'm having this feeling like I might've completely outdone myself with this burger. It not looks a burger, so lady. good, if I don't say so myself. Fry, fry a chunk of cauliflower, put it on some bread, serve it in a restaurant to normal people and see what... I, I would love to, I would, I would pay to see that, bro. I would pay to see like a skit done where the skit, and I'm sure someone might do this after seeing this, like serving vegan, serving ridiculous vegan burgers to people at like a Shake Shack or something where they just take like fried pieces of cauliflower, put it on a burger and then see what people say. That's what I want to see. Um, but honestly, out of all the vegan day of eatings, to my memory, this is the Best so far, because the food she's choosing to eat are actually calorically dense. The bread, the cauliflower are, are things I would consider acceptable. The vegan mayo here and the slaw and the spinach and the avocado, I'm not, I'm not that much of a fan of, but at least she's eating somewhat calorically dense grain-based foods, which can't be said about a, a lot of other vegans that are just trying to restrict their calories artificially and only sticking to fruits and vegetables. And then they probably have some uh, some tall, ugly dude take them out to uh, to Nobu and a steakhouse and uh, a fancy French dessert place all on the same night where they eat 19,000 calories every weekend to make up for their ridiculous fantasy Pinterest diets. It smells so good. I feel like it's going to be so crispy and delicious. And this slaw with apple in it just looks... Mmm. And it is so tasty. I feel like I'm so dramatic because every time I make a burger, I'm like, well. Wow. If she says burger one more time, my eyes are going to pop back out of my head and undo my surgery. It's the best burger I've ever made. But truly, she so, oh. is so ridiculously good. Mm -hmm. No, it's not mm -hmm. good. You're you're starving. You're, you're starving yourself. You're, uh, this is so delusional. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. 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 That's the candida mm -hmm. dancing in her stomach. Almond caramel crunch. Hey, it says it's organic, vegan, gluten-free with probiotics. <laughs> Bro, what are they putting? Are they putting probiotics in every vegan product now because these companies know how messed up vegan people's guts are? <laughs> Bro, you, you, if you put a synthetic... The, 
I'm looking into probiotic powders now and, and researching them more, but you know, I'm not confident in, in what they are made from and also the, the effectiveness and activity, especially when you have things like yogurt, kefir, water kefir. Um, but back to the topic at hand, almond caramel crunch with a stragglers. That's probably the probiotic. <laughs> Dude, these bars are $4 each. That's more than I charge for any of the bars on Frankie Strange Foods, which are way higher quality. It's almonds, cacao paste, coconut sugar, cacao butter, those sound good so far. Almond, chocolate, sugar, right? So so good so far. But then they use brown rice syrup, which is very high in arsenic. They use the, the artificial probiotic powders. Then they put in caramel extract. And then they're putting in blue cornflower petal and tamari. So this isn't this isn't that bad, but um, honestly, anything with brown rice in it, especially brown rice syrup, it's so high in arsenic, it's a no-go. And and that's probably the number one negative ingredient in most protein bars and health bars in, in these health food stores is brown rice syrup. Because from a conventional normie wisdom perspective, oh, brown rice syrup is healthier than normal sugar because it's made from brown rice and brown rice is healthy. When in reality, brown rice is is so high in arsenic, that's the reason that most cultures eat white rice. They literally avoid brown rice because it's so high in arsenic. It's not good. Looks good. Oh, that's what the- So blue, as is probably- the, That's what that blue petal was on. Dude, this is like, dude, I need, they probably, their cost on that bar, is probably like 25% of what it costs me to make my bars just because they're using like low quality generic ingredients. And it's so unhealthy. Just make it look artsy, bro. And so as is probably food. obvious at this point, I'm definitely craving a lot of fresh food at the moment. And tonight is going to be no different when it comes to dinner. I'm going to make a nourish bowl, which I recently have really, I think, recognized. And I might have talked about this before, so I apologize if I'm repeating myself. But I really feel my best when I eat nourish bowls. And I think it... Nourish bowl. So this is what? This is going to be the biggest oxymoron? Nourish? really just comes down to the fact there's a lot of plant diversity and as well as that there's you know tends to be a source of protein uh, a source of fat and a sort of source of carbohydrates as well as like fresh veggies and stuff so uh, yeah I really really love a nourish bowl and always like can just like feel it in my body how good I feel after I've eaten a nourish bowl so I recently was like, I think I need to start like elevating my nourish bowl game. And can, can we stop saying nourish bowl, please, before I have an aneurysm? <laughs> oh my God, who are these trendy morons that start these t that uh, come up with these terms? Eating them more often, and the thing I really enjoy about making nourish bowls is the fact that she won't no stop way, saying like, it set guideline in terms of you know what you're making you really can kind of like mix it up and the only i guess guideline so i've just said that there's no guideline but there probably is the only thing i tend to follow is just like having like a really nourishing balanced meal essentially all right any bets how many more times is she going to say nourish in the next 15 seconds um and having that source of like protein fat and carbohydrates and fresh veggies and noticing that that feels really good on the body basically. So uh, tonight I'm going to make a tempeh nourish bowl with a peanut butter sauce, which uh, in my opinion, uh, tempeh and a peanut butter sauce pair perfectly together. The tempeh that I'm gonna use, now I know that tempeh is not a popular ingredient with a lot of people and with you guys. So uh, if you don't like tempeh, you can easily sub tofu in this recipe, just so you know. Um, but the tempeh that I like to use tends to be ones that you can get from health food stores or specialty supermarkets. The tempeh that you can get in Australia at like major supermarkets, I really don't enjoy to be honest. Uh, it's just so, so different. So tempeh is just like a soy protein product, not good for you. Uh, so some of these soy products are more processed and worse for you than others, but uh, compared to the other stuff she's eaten all day, like keep in mind, like from the perspective of all the vegan day of eating we've seen, this is still by far the, the, the best one to my memory.
because everything she's eating has been somewhat calorically dense. It's not too high in anti-nutrients. And even that that bar she just had, even though I was trash talking about the arsenic, that bar compared to what most people eat is still pretty healthy. We're just we're just lacking some animal nutrition overall in this diet. However, this meal, starting with tempeh, sounds like it might actually be uh might not be that great because having these chunks of you know the I mean, I don't think I ever did a video going fully in depth on the negatives of soy, but we know it has estrogen, there's isoflavones, there's there's a lot of anti-nutrients in soy. And although uh, the fermentation process might uh, reduce some inflammatory things in the tempeh, it's still, still not something you want to be eating. Different to these ones. And the one that I've got today is a lupin and green pea unless you're a boy and you want to play with other boys or you're a girl and you want to play with other girls tempeh that i got from the health food store and it's also made in northern new south wales which is where i live which is really really cool i am really excited to make this nourish bowl yeah i was looking at something did you guys know if you put like if you put australia on top of the united states like from a geography perspective it's like as big as the entire united states like did you realize australia was that big for dinner uh, and if you like the look of it I definitely recommend trying out something like this at home remember you don't need to have like every single ingredient you can easily is she, is she missing some teeth already yeah I don't know about that sub things out or leave things out or add things or whatever you'd like to do I think that's one of the cool things about uh, making food like this and exploring cooking plant-based food yeah I, I think I think one, one of the things that that's very evident um, and, and We've talked about in the past, most, if not all these vegans experience very poor dental health very rapidly. In general, is that you can really be creative and learn a lot more about cooking, which is really fun. So I'm really excited to make this for dinner. So let's get into it. So I started by cutting up the tempeh and I used half of a block and cut it into some cubes. And then I transferred it into a container and drizzled with some soy sauce as well as some sesame oil, just keeping it nice and simple. I put the lid on and then I shook this up uh, and left it to marinate for about 20 minutes before transferring it into a fry pan and frying it all up i also cooked some quinoa Yum. over the stove at the same time Oxidized which i usually do quinoa or rice for this depending on what i have on hand or what i'm feeling and whilst the quinoa was cooking i continued frying up uh, that sesame soy tempeh i also prepped some fresh ingredients so in today's bowl i decided yeah the, the problem is if there is any significant fat content to the soy product it is it is going to be very inflammatory omega-6 based to have some cucumber i also had some radishes which i've been really enjoying and then i also had some carrot which i used this peeler for uh, to get it nice and thin then once that was all done we are making the peanut butter sauce so i put some smooth peanut butter as well as some soy sauce and then i also add in some rice wine vinegar and some sesame oil and i start so it's, mixing it, it's, this it's it's interesting and nice to see uh, someone not using these generic nonsense vegan sauces because I think in like 90% of these vegan day of eatings, they mix tahini with maple syrup and like garlic powder and onion powder. That's like their go-to dressing, but at least this, it's although it's super unhealthy and bad for you, like conventional peanut butter and all this stuff, bad for you, but at least it's somewhat traditional from their culinary perspective, I guess. Probably still a botched version together i add water as i go to get it to the desired consistency you want it kind of like this like thick enough that it's not like a watery texture but thin enough so that it is pourable in some capacity this was like super super perfect so then it comes to assembling the bowl and i put the quinoa in i also added in some spinach fresh greens are so good in this i added in the carrot as well as the cucumber then i topped it with some avocado as well as that sesame soy tempeh which is nice and crispy now drizzled it with a whole heap of that peanut sauce and then topped it with the uh, radish as well as some sesame seeds for a bit of crunch. So, I mean, compared to the other meals, this is actually less healthy. Uh, it's not that calorically dense, a lot of omega-6, decent amount of anti-nutrients. 
and I loved this dinner so so very much. I really hope you enjoyed uh, spending the day with me and seeing what I ate in a day and getting hopefully at least one new meal idea to try out at home. As always thanks so much for being here and supporting my YouTube channel. I appreciate it and you so very much. I hope you have a beautiful beautiful week and I will see you very soon with another video. See you soon. Bye. All right, sweet girl. Hope I wasn't too mean. However, uh, I find it difficult to believe like this was everything she did. You know, so so what? She doesn't take supplements and she doesn't drink coffee. How true is that? I don't know. Uh, it'd be nice to have uh, more of a disclaimer because I mean, if this if this was what she was doing, uh, one, I don't think it's enough calories for the day. Two, I mean. You would get so depleted in nutrients so quickly uh, just eating this stuff. Just see, eating, eating this type of diet just for a few months it would destroy most people. You need, you need, you need B vitamins to process uh, grains. So that's why mixing, you know, having meat and grains with every meal, is, is, which what you guys see me do, is, is a healthy combination. But uh, I guess that's going to be it for this day of eating review. A little longer when I want it to go. Uh, than I wanted to go, so I won't, I won't yap on too much. But as we said, first few meals weren't that bad, and then uh, last meal, not so good. Yeah, you know, if these people are gonna do vegan diets, the main thing they have to keep in mind is go organic, reduce the pesticide content, uh, stick to calorically dense grain-based foods. You need to feed your body, and you know a lot of these vegetables and fruits even are very high in anti-nutrients, flavonoids, carotene that aren't that great for you. Uh, if you're going to stick to fats, ideally saturated fats are much, much healthier. You know, you have coconut in comparison to pretty much all the vegan fats are pretty inflammatory, but uh, could be better, could be worse. So thank you guys for joining me. You can go to franktestafano.com where you will see all of my interesting and unique creative health businesses. Frankie's Strange Meat, Frankie's Strange Foods, Wi-Fi Shielding, Frankie's Naturals Organ Supplements. Uh... Yeah, maybe you guys should uh maybe you guys should support me before I I really lose my mind and end up in Australia with some brunette baddie following a vegan diet, bro. She just has me on a leash. Just I won't get into I won't go too deep into that joke, but uh, we'll save that for another video. Thanks for joining guys. I'll see you soon.